Okay, this is another video. Uh, it will be probably at least, uh, I think, the third one today. But I just wanted to point out while I can, it's currently printing. It's obvious it's the first layer because you can see here it's almost translucent. The thickness of the first layer and the, uh, the troweling down of the first layer is exactly the way I set it up to do. Uh, I always want the first layer to be smooth, no gaps, no gouges, no lumps and bumps, just literally smooth all the way across because that gives the second layer a better chance of coming out just as perfect if the, the layer that it's laying on top of is just as perfect as the table itself. The fact that this goes down so smooth and at the proper distance from the bed, it actually will replicate the texture of the tape itself. So whatever print surface you print on, if it's troweling down, if it's trammed properly, then the first layer will reflect what the print surface is. So when this is done, one way to check the first layer is by removing it from the bed and turning it over. Then you'll be looking at the back side of the first layer. It's as easy as that. This is a two-part print, as you can see. I set up the exact same way every time. Well over 3,900 STL files have all been printed in this fashion, so it's not an impossibility. This is the head. This is the, uh, the print head, or they call the hot end. This here is the plastic extruder from Creality, the original body of the plastic extruder. All four of my printers, including my CR-10S, still have the original classic plastic extruder. There it is. There's the proof. If you ever have troubles with that little arm right there, that's the most likely thing to have to replace. It's like three bucks, five minutes, no e-step changes, no modifications of any sort of the extruder at all. Same stepper motor, same everything, same gear. E-steps stay the same at 93. All right, the white Bowden tube stays the same. Doesn't need to be the blue uh, Bowden tube because the blue tube has a smaller diameter, inside diameter. So there's a bit more friction when the filament is pulled from the spool, pushed out through the Bowden tube, it creates more friction around the curve right here. All right? So to avoid that, keep the white Bowden tube. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no reason to change to any other tube than the original white Bowden tube. Then they say, oh, well, geez, the white Bowden tube will burn up against the nozzle. That may be true. But if you keep the temperature of the nozzle to below, say, 210 Celsius, you'll have no issues. If you decide to print at higher temperatures for whatever reason, then just add this. This is the fix. You can see the nozzle. You can see high temp blue Bowden tube right there. You can see a little spacer. This is a little plastic spacer. That's PLA, printed in PLA, with a hole in it, okay? And the coupler. So this allows filament to pass through the spacer, through the Bowden tube, and through to the nozzle. This keeps the white Bowden tube at a good distance right here, from here to the nozzle, away. So there's no chance of the white bone tube ever getting hot. In fact, with this setup, you could literally remove the white bone tube anytime you want, except during the print. So once you just push it in there, it doesn't have to be seated against the nozzle because that's the job of the blue tube. So when the coupler's threaded in and the nozzle's threaded in, the blue Bowden tube is secured. It's locked in place. 
so there's no gap here, no gap there, no gap anywhere. Okay, so that's the fix. So that way you can keep the delivery bolt until this delivers to the hot end, and then the, uh, the rest of that takes the filament the rest of the way. So if you decide not to use the white bowden tube, then that's your decision, of course. But I wanted to keep the white bowden tube, but I wanted to be able to have a high temp nozzle. So I converted to this, okay? So this works. It's, it's, it's been working for on and on. I mean, since I changed it, I can't even say how many prints I've done. No clogs. No worn out uh, tube. Now, if this tube does wear out, say maybe 50 prints down the, the road there at high temperature, I'm saying if it's at 210, no issues. If you start going higher, it will probably eventually wear out. Then all you got to do is change that blue tube. Cut another one to the exact same size, pull the old one out, drop the new one in, thread both parts here in place, and you're good. I don't know what else to say. But there it is. Proof is in the doing. All right. Also, the bed temperature, and you, I'm sure you guessed, is zero set point. It's room temperature. 31 Celsius is room temperature. That's what the bed is at right now. This is not a heated bed. It's not required when you actually print in this fashion. When you properly tram the bed, you properly have the, the perfect distance, you have the perfect temperature, and everything is good, it's going to stay put. Okay? You can see already no curling, no brim, no wrap, no messy purple Elmer's glue. You can still use all that. You can still use the glue and whatever, you know, whatever works for you. This works for me. All right, same springs. I show that all the time. Same everything. Same hot end. Not a direct drive. No electronic gizmo, you know, afterthought there. This is how I do it. This is, how, this is what's working right now. It, it always works. It's simple. Step one, two, three, A, B, C, that's it. Start printing. You don't even have to print a so-called test G-code with all the little squares and circles and lines and crap because all of that has to be removed. And if you don't remove it without affecting the table, you're screwed. you got to do it again. All right? So there you go. This is just basic 3D printing at its finest. This is the workhorse printer. It's the workhorse because it works. There's no troubleshooting issues. You can see nothing is of any troubleshooting problem. A simple hot end, simple Bowden tube delivery, simple uh, extru extruder, excuse me. So there you go. I, I don't know what else to say, how else to do it, but this works for me all the time, including right now. All right. I'll give you a tour here so you can see how it's set up. If your printer's uh, anywhere close to this, you'll probably be okay. If not, then good luck. Oh yeah. I don't know if I mentioned it, but guess what E steps are at, based on what you see right here. 93. Factory set 93. I know, it's amazing. Alright, happy printing.